How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. We're gonna have something fun today. We are going to talk a little bit about mathematics and how attack percent and skill damage percentages work. Now, if you hate mathematics, I'm just gonna give you the answer straight away at the start. In fact, we are gonna do something a little bit different, something not very scientific, which is to use a given outcome and backtest it. So that is what I'm going to do and we can move on with the video. Now for those who want to get out of the video, here are the results but I will still recommend you to stay throughout the rest of the video because I will drop you some wisdom at the end as well. And for the rest of you, let's proceed with the details. Now assuming our calculation is correct for direct attack damage, let's use Alice as a prime example. She has 849 attack and let's take a look at the rest of her abilities over here. While Levitate is active, 50% attack to this unit, while HP is above 80% plus 55% attack for this unit. As for her main, we're not going to care about it because we're not going to heal ourselves. And as for her weapon call, while HP of this unit is above 60% plus 25% attack to this unit. In addition, her leader skill gives her an extra 140% attack. Okay, but before we proceed, I'm just going to chuck all the data down in the description so I don't have to bore you and fill the screen with numbers. Now, excluding ability number 1, we are going to have a total multiplier of 3.2 and that's because if you add up all those numbers additively you're actually going to get 220 percent attack and if you include your base 100 percent attack you're going to get 3.2 as your current multiplier so 849 times 3.2 you're going to expect to do 2717 damage with your normal direct attacks so let's take a look at some of the sped up runs over here so that we can get an idea of how this works now, as you can see, I'm just going to use a lot of normal attacks. I'm not going to use my skill just yet because the moment I use my skill, I'm going to grab myself levitation and that's going to add an additional 50% attack. So we're going to test out whether 50% here really translates to 50% extra base attack damage, which is basically half of 849. So all the numbers that you're seeing on the screen, I'm actually going to add it up into a spreadsheet and do a final calculation and then do an average of these numbers. You can check out the details at the bottom, but here are the results. So my average direct attack damage is about 2,748 without the float buff, which is very similar to what I expected, which is 2,717. And with the float buff, my damage actually increased to 3,137, which basically means that my average damage increased by about 389 which translates to something about 46% extra damage. So that is very close to 50%. We probably had some low rolls, but I'm just going to trust that this is exactly 50%. So because our calculations are actually correct, we can then assume that our hypothesis is right. So let's move on with skill damage calculation. Take a look at Rams over here. She's going to be our test subject. Now pay attention, she does 22.5 times damage to enemies with her skill. She also increases her skill damage by quite a lot from her leader, from her ability number 1, 2, and 3. And this sums up to 390% skill damage. Now Rams has a base attack of 874, and her weapon core grants her an additional 60% attack at max. So what you notice is that Rams require a little bit of charging up, so we're actually going to charge her up all the way by using 10 different skills before we start the calculation. Now because we have extra attack percent, we are not calculating attack percent together with skill damage, right? So you refer back to the formula at the start of the video, attack percent is calculated separately from skill damage. So we're going to be running with add capped 1.6 times attack and 4.9 times skill damage. Take note that we are including the 100% base attack and base skill damage. And in conjunction with a 22.5 times skill multiplier, we should expect about 155,000 damage. And with the 10th skill we are done, let's move on with the calculation from here on. Like I said before, you can check out the numbers at the bottom, but I'm going to give you the results right here. So the, our average damage is actually 154.6 thousand damage. That is super close to our estimate. So essentially, the calculation is correct as well. This is a form of backtesting. So you might find this information maybe not so interesting or maybe not so important because you know just load a bunch of skill damage and a bunch of attack percent right but that is a very very big mistake and i'm about to share with you some wisdom over here now i want you to think about this which is more powerful right a 1.5 times multiplier of attack together with 1.5 times multiplier of skill damage or a 2 times multiplier of skill damage I'm going to give you a bit of time to think about it, but if you decided that 1.5 times and 1.5 times is the bigger number, then you are right. So even though we had a collective amount of a 100% increase in stats, or rather damage multiplier, the truth is 1.5 times 1.5 actually gives you 2.25, 
Whereas if you just stuck with 100% skill damage or 100% attack, your multiply is actually just gonna be 2. So you have an additional 25% attack from nowhere, right? Seemingly nowhere. So that is wisdom number one. What you want to do is aim to balance your attack percent and skill damage percentages. But of course, that's not to say that you should give up like 200% skill damage just to balance your attack percent, right? So you have to do your own calculation. Now wisdom number two, attack percent is much better than skill damage percent. But wait, what does that even mean? I thought we just decided that attack percent and skill damage are equivalent. Wrong! Don't forget that attack percent actually benefits your direct attack damage, your skill attack damage, and your power flip attack damage. So it is a lot more versatile as a stat. And the amount of attack that you need is not very obvious most of the time. But if you're gonna run a direct attack team or a power flip damage team, definitely go heavy on attack percentage. And you can totally forego skill damage, right? And here is my final wisdom number three. Our bird actually gives your entire co-op team 40% attack and 70% skill damage. Now, if he is not OP, I don't know what is. He is going to be a staple in every single skill damage comp, which is why you see him so widely used. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. I hope you learned something. I hope it was informative. I'm sorry that it was a little bit long, but I do really enjoy making videos such as this. Because if you're going to be a free-to-play player, you better play it smart and you have to use mathematics to your advantage. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. This has been free-to-play by the way, and as always, I will see you in the next video.